It's Feedback Gaming. Time for a tutorial slash exploit. Where we're going to talk about generals, field marshals, experience, and how to use them effectively. We're going to start up a game as Italy. Mussolini. What we're going to talk about firstly is the differences between generals and field marshals. I'm spoon feeding you here because a lot of you already know this, so we'll blast through this. The difference between a leader which is either a general or a field marshal, is the amount of divisions that they can contain. So, for instance, in this case, we have three field marshals and five generals. Uh, if a field marshal, sorry, if a general uh, is commanding more than 24 divisions, so we're going to do that now. We're going to make him select more than 24 divisions. He will suffer a penalty on his stats. So this guy is four skill, and he is a panzer leader. Now, if you hover over his portrait here, you will see the penalty that he's receiving for all of his stats uh, based upon uh, being over capacity. A lot of people see this red here in the panic. They're like, oh no, I'm over my limit. Oh no, what do I do? The truth behind it is you're over your limit. So this guy is getting a reduction of all of his stats by 62%. And you can look at the stats there showing on just above, well, just to the side of the portrait. It shows exactly what the amounts equate to. These are the full amounts. These are the amounts again. So sometimes it's okay to have a general that's a little bit over the limit. Because the, the penalty isn't that bad. In this case, he's really over the limit. And the penalty is 62%, which is quite brutal. So what would you, you would do is you would promote him to a field marshal. Be aware that he will lose all of his traits. And he will lose one skill point. So what that will equate to will be this guy. Now he will not suffer from any penalty. But sadly, he's lost a stat point. So he's lost one point. Just to let you know, one skill equates to plus 5% attack and plus 5% defense. There you go. That's the difference between a general and a field marshal. Okay, so the next thing is traits. So there are several several traits that generals can gain and field marshals can gain. They are separate. The thing, one thing to understand is a general gains traits very uh, based on their situation, aka what they're doing in that exact moment. To give you a few examples... Uh, some traits for generals are Desert Fox, which gives a combat, defense, and movement bonus in de deserts. Mountaineer, which is the same thing again, attack, defense, and movement bonus in mountains. And there's another one here, Invader, which gives a additional invasion and planning speed of minus or plus 30%. And another example would be an Engineer, which gives 10% attack over rivers. So they are traits specific, uh, specific situations where it's terrain specific. So, I don't know, the way I see it in my head is generals get bonuses to how they're fighting in specific areas of the world. Where field marshals' bonuses, traits, um, are more broad. They they tailor towards attack, defense, supply, logistics. In this case, this field marshal uh, is a defensive doctrine expert, and he would gain a maximum additional max entrenchment of plus 30% based upon that. There's also a special trait, which is called Old Guard, which is unique because if you promote someone with Old Guard, they will still continue to have Old Guard as a Field Marshal as they would a General, so you don't lose that trait. It is a very bad trait, and there's absolutely no reason why you want to pick this. It does give a bonus to Entrenchment, but in all fairness, you really want to be avoiding that anyway. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about how they gain traits. So, as you probably guess, with that old... Good old chestnut. If you are in combat, you gain experience. Oh, believe it or not, you gain experience in combat. I know. Believe it or not. So in this case, this general, which we're going to select someone who's fairly noobish. This guy is a fairly noobish as well. They're all level one. They have no traits. They just gain plus five, plus five. And when they enter combat, which I will demonstrate now, they will gain experience. So this guy, this guy is gaining experience. You get one percent, going about one percent per hour almost. Gaining experience pretty quick, and you hover over him as well, it'll show what traits he's gaining. There you go, he's gaining a 5% Trickster. Trickster equates to 25% Reconnaissance, and you gain that trait based on flanking a general or being flanked. So, let's talk about the traits then. So, traits are gained in certain situations. Look at this general. This general is gaining... Oh, he's not gaining any traits, so I can't look at that one. But, for instance, just to give you an example, the Engineer, which is, gives 10% attack over rivers, is only you only gain that trait and you develop it if you're attacking a fort or across a river. A lot of them are very safe, straightforward. Like, for instance, Jungle Rat is attacking into a jungle. Uh, Hillfire is attacking into hills. It's pretty self-explanatory. Field Marshals on the other hand are a little bit different. Um, like Logistics Wizard... Logistics Wizard 
uh, which reduce supply by 20% for the Field Marshal is only when you're out of supply. And that's pretty much it. There are the traits. Be aware, Field Marshals gain experience a lot lower. So the best situation to do is to train up a General to a very high level, like 6 or 7 experience, and then promote him to a Field Marshal. Bonuses, you're going to get a very high skill level uh, Field Marshal. The downside is you're going to lose all of his traits. It's a trade-off. You've got to decide what's best. In all fairness, you want to juggle as many Generals as possible below 24 uh, divisions before upgrading them to field marshals. Field marshals are situational over a large front line, such as attacking German, attacking the Soviet Union. For Barbarossa, a field marshal will be very useful. But there again, if you want to do pincer divisions, uh, little generals would be better for that over having a field marshal. There you go. Okay, now we're going to look, talk about the Ethiopian Civil War. So I talked about an exploit. One of the exploits is because you start the game at war, you have the ability to grind these generals to gain a lot of experience. So as you probably would gather, the lower skill level they are, uh, the quicker they gain experience. And therefore, if they go higher skills, like 5, 6, 7, they need to gain more experience to level up. Just typically like any other RPG, really. So, in this case, you want to grind these guys to at least level 5. It seems to be level 5 seems to be the sweet spot. But if you get to level 5, you... I don't know, in this case, it's the, it's the best of both worlds. You get that big experience attack, which is... Uh, in this case, it'd be 25, 25, 25 attack, 25 defense for, for skill 5. And plus, uh, if you're grinding them quite heavily in fighting, um, you don't gain as much skill because the skill is capped off. Uh, the, what I'm trying to say is the sweet spot is about 5. And that's pretty much it. So what I can do right now, just to demonstrate, is I'm just going to fight in this war and grind these generals to level 5. Um, and avoid ending the war as such. So in this case, I'm fighting them back. I'm not going to take Abyss Abba. And I'm going to try my absolute best to hold them back for as long as possible. And that is pretty much, pretty much it. So this guy now has gained Mountaineer, which is a very good trait. Trickster, which is not too bad as well. And he's skill 4. And also he's working on being an Engineer and a Desert Fox, which you probably would gather. Engineer, you gain that trait from attacking over rivers. And Desert Fox, you get that from fighting in deserts, which is this province here. As you can probably gather, we're, we're grinding our generals as much as possible. It does appear from experimentation that the more that you, uh, more divisions a general has, the quicker they gain experience. So we'll add some extra divisions on here to help him out. Go here, go here, go here. And you can see because of that, they're fighting. And again, lots of experience. So as you can probably see now, he's skill 4, he's getting experience a lot slower. So in this scenario, you'd be probably better off capping it about skill 5 and then... Uh, not bothering grinding them anymore. This guy is gaining Trickster and Engineer. Trickster, I believe, is is gained from flanking. So in this case, this there's a division flanking here. Just, flanking just basically means more than one division attacking into a province from different angles. So th this one of the, this will be the primary attack, and these two are flanking. So in this case, they're flanking. A lot of these traits you don't even need to think about. You don't need to specifically think to yourself, oh, I need to fight in the hills to gain the, the Mountaineer trait. In all fairness, just from attacking, just from playing the game, a lot of these traits are gained anyway. Remember, they don't get to benefit from the trait until they get 100% of the learnt traits. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Like, this guy's learning to be a trickster, and not until he gets it, he's not going to get the bonus, which he gets it now. Is that self-explanatory? I don't know. I, I feel the need to explain that, even though it seems kind of pointless, but there you go. So yeah, this guy's level 5 now, so what we'll do is switch him out to a new guy, and as you can probably get the gain experience really quickly. So this is a bit of an exploit, so what you can do right now is grind the Ethiopian Civil War, get a lot of your generals, so about level 5, level, uh, sorry, skill 4 or skill 5, and then uh, you've got, when the war kicks off in France and Yugoslavia and the Balkans, you can have a, a lot of really, really decent generals to play with. And in this case, when you're about to take the capital, because remember, if you take the capital, that's when Ethiopia capitulates, and therefore you've lost your all, all the gains you've gained. So in this case, if you get this guy, you realize, okay, we're about to push the capital now, so you can push back, go here, and railroad them back. And there you go, and just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and eventually Ethiopia will probably run out of either manpower or guns. In that case, you'll have to capitulate them. But in this scenario, you get to grind them as much as possible and gain lots of really decent generals, so... Like some random guy here. Go here, go here, go, and attack. And there you go, look. Getting lots of free experience really quickly. Nice free experience. 
In this case, you probably don't need to hire any more generals like I've just done just now. You can use the ones you've got. That's it, guys. If you want more tutorials slash exploity videos, feel free to drop a comment below of anything you want to be you want to learn more about. Uh, aside from that, that is pretty much the end of the video. And uh, remember to comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.